Hey everyone, this is Lucky70x, welcome back to Let's Play Okami Den. In the last episode, we did some stuff, we went back 100 years in the past, but not actually back into the present here because we uh, can apparently warp through time now. And we are going to finally return those lucky coins we got, I think we have like 6 of them now, I believe? Yeah, so uh, we only need 5 in order to get the best weapons in the game. Uh, off screen, I did grind to 25 demon livers, even though you only need 20. Um, I should be able to pick up the rest of the demon livers I need to get the rest of these. Um, once you need 40 demon livers in total, uh, I should be able to pick up the, remain, up the remaining 15 in the next area. But for now, that means I can quickly go ahead and upgrade my glaive, because obviously, as you guys know, I love the glaives. So we get ourselves a nice, shiny new feather sword, because clearly feathers are shiny. And while we're here, we might as well pick up the uh, last scroll that we haven't got yet, the uh, last you know, extra ability scroll of Cherry Bomb 2, which will not let us use two Cherry Bombs, which really isn't that special. It could have gotten it way back before the Playhouse, even. But I didn't want to, because really, what reason would you have to draw that was a really shitty-looking Cherry Bomb? Uh, what reason would you have to draw those? I don't know. But we picked up some meat by helping up that boy in the past that, I don't even remember his name off the top of my head. Nazo, was it, I think? Um, so we helped him out, we got some meat in this episode. We're gonna figure out, we're gonna head to the moon cave, and we're gonna see what happens and what this meat will be used for. But yeah, two cherry bombs at once. Big whoopee. As you guys have seen, uh, if you draw two cherry bombs, if you draw, if you, um, used to draw two a second cherry bomb, it would just replace the first one. But now we can draw two. Okay, probably not ever really gonna use that to any sort of advantage. It's kinda like the lightning one. Like, the lightning one, really don't use it that much. Like, I think, I think I have, like, one case in the future where, where it might be handy just to get demon stuff, but I don't need demon stuff anymore, so... It's not really useful. I mean, there's not really any wid enemies, so the, uh, a lightning elemental attack is really not that useful. I think the only thing that's weak to it is the snake stash, actually. While I'm here, though, just for the sake of thoroughness, let's go see if the dog got better, because... Why not? Let's see if he got better. I mean, come on, we, we, we helped him out. May as well see if those herbs work. Maybe they didn't work. Maybe we need to help him out more, but as you can see, the dog is perfectly fine. So, Nazo is happy. The dog has a headband. I never noticed that before. That's pretty badass, Mr. Dog. I, I approve of your uh, of your decision. But Nazo's home. Uh, Kamiki Village of the past is pretty happy, and someday they will grow up to... Wait, he doesn't even have a father! And neither is the one in the future! Does this generation... Does, does this family line just not have men? I don't understand how generations work in Kamiki. You people are all the same. It's just weird, man. It's just weird. But we're gonna go ahead out to uh, Shinshu Field and see what happens from there. It's gonna be kind of a bit of a cutscene episode, but we'll be able to introduce some new enemies along the way, so that's always a good thing as well. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Um, basically, like I said before, do not come up here unless you're ready to activate a pretty important cutscene, because this cutscene is very vital and key, and that is my phone going off again in the middle of a cutscene. And that's okay. So, um, that phone just always... Whenever, I, whenever I'm not recording, it never goes off, but whenever I do record, it does. It's absolutely freaking ridiculous, and I love it. Anyway, so the pendant begins to beam information into Crow's mind. That's kind of future high-tech Star trek -y stuff right there. And I probably just insulted every Trek fan. I, 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 I enjoy Star Trek. My dad's a huge Trek fan, so... He's a huge Trekkie, so so don't hate me. But, um, yeah, information be beaten to his head. And he's, sh is, he's shaking. Why are you shaking? Why are you falling to your knees? This doesn't sound good. What did the what did the little pendant thing tell you? Your mission? I thought we already completed your mission. Of course we didn't complete his mission. You think it would be that easy, guys? No, Corral still has a story. And this is where things start um getting interesting with Corral. Because apparently he's feeling a bit rebellious. He doesn't like this mission. What is your mission? Yes, Chibi, be confused. Tell him what the mission Where are you going, Corral? Don't do your levitating thing. Don't do your flying thing. What are you planning? No. We need to go to the moon cave and save the world, dude. 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 What are you doing? Crow. Crow, come on. Don't be a dick. Don't get your panties wet. I I'm going to keep that joke up because I love that joke. Oh, Captain, you were so cool until you died. And Chibi's like, no, don't leave me. Dude, we are. We have important stuff to do. Where are you going? Why are you doing this, Corral? What was your mission? So many questions left unanswered. We shall have to learn them in the future. Because unfortunately, Corral 
is going to leave us, which is precisely why I didn't want to come up here and activate this cutscene, because then you lose Corral, and he's gone. And that's not cool. So, Chibi, I, I know you're sad. You're all alone now, which sucks. And by the way, if you did that, you can't um go back into the past if you don't have a partner. So, I couldn't really do any of that stuff if I came over here. That's why I didn't do it. But I couldn't spoil it. Because then you guys would be like, spoilers, even though if you guys, even if I don't spoil things, you guys then call me out on the things I didn't spoil because I'm pretending to not know things, so I don't spoil. But then you guys are, so it's like a lose-lose for me either way. But I didn't spoil it because, yeah, stuff. But while we're here, we might as well explore the rest of the Chinchu field now that we're all by ourselves and grab the remaining items, including this one, which I believe, I don't think there's a source of fire in here, so this one you need to use Inferno for, so uh, may as well do that, although... The item you get here, really not that important. It's a new treasure, so we haven't got this kind of treasure before, this hollow statue. But as you'll see in a little bit, um, they're not that hard to, it's not that hard to get another one. You only need one, obviously, to complete the thing. So, not the most important treasure. So if you're trying to not get Inferno for some reason, um, or Firestorm, whichever one's wit. I always forget, I always mix up the two, you guys know this already. Um, but you will not need it, necessarily, to 100% the game. So, don't worry about that that much, because I believe there's actually one over here. But before we get to that, we have a dandy 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 lion, and it needs to be blown away. I, you know, I think, I think the, the story behind this is I think Clover Studios worked in the first game, but they didn't work on this one. And the Clover in the first game that gave you praise is similar to this. It was very much like, you know, it was sort of like a symbol of it being Clover Studios. However, the Clover Studios didn't work, so they changed it to a dandelion, because, I don't know... Reasons! Businessy sort of stuff, so that's why you don't see any clovers in this game randomly, and it becomes dandelions instead, which is just fine and dandy lions. Ha ha ha! Oh, someone please shut me up! I'm making horrible puns now. Um, so over here is another treasure, but uh, this one does not require inferno; it just requires some fine skills. And obviously, you can see over there that we'll uh, need to use the gale storm as well. So, um, what we do precisely that? So. Um, we'll go ahead, blow the wheat leaves away, grab the treasure inside, which I've pretty much already spoiled, is another hollow statue. So, uh, there's the other one that you need. So, well, you don't need it, you only need one of them. So, there you go, take your pick, I suppose. And there is also another kind of treasure we can get. We're, we're, we're gonna get, like, a lot of these uh, remaining treasures really rapidly. In fact, within the next few videos, we're gonna get every single possible type of treasure in the game, and thus complete the antiques list. So, um, even though there's, like, about... Four, like there's about like so this episode probably like four or five left to get. We're gonna get them all pretty fast here. I think there's only four left actually. Um, I'm trying to think. I can think of four off the top of my head, including this hollow statue, but uh, can't think of the other ones. But we'll get another one in just a little bit because there is actually some treasures we can get down um, in this section. Because as you guys know, there's some little areas off to the side. Uh, we'll have to go explore those as well. And here's also where we're gonna find two new enemies. But before we do that. We have this dude. It's Man Puku. And he is the weirdest. Th just just such a weird I don't know. It's like I respect I, it's like I don't really I can't really take him seriously as a character, but at the same time he's so cool, but at the same time he's not and I don't know how to think of this character because he's just so weird. So he's like food and you give him the meat and this is why you need the meat because without the meat you will not be able to get him. Um, and as you guys can maybe possibly guess, um, he's obviously important to the story, and you can probably imagine why. And suddenly he turns into an oven, and I'm like, what the? And Chibi's like, what the? And I'm like, what? I don't understand. People can turn to ovens now. Why would this technology from 100 years ago, people were apparently oven appliances, because the ovens were not invented yet, so people had to make their own ovens by becoming ovens. That's clearly how it worked. But, um, I'm, <laughs> Chief is like, you're weird. Um, yes, you cheat. Yes, I, I think you clearly need a diet, dude. You're, you're a little, um, ground around the edges there. Just, just a little bit. And then, suddenly, he hugs Chibi, and there's much love, and Chibi's like, dude! Personal space, man. Um, so yeah, this is Mampuku. He is going to be our new, uh, as you might be able to guess, our new partner in crime. Um, and he's actually, as a partner, he's really interesting. Um, and obviously he's sort of, he's, he's sort of the stereotypical fat character who just needs food all the time. Um, 
that's sort of his problem. He eats everything. I mean, when you're in an oven, you probably are going to eat a lot of stuff. Just if, if, if you've evolved the capacity to cook your own food with your body, you know that something's a bit wrong. But um, he is actually an extremely useful character. You'll see why in a little bit. Um, but we don't want him to run, because then he'll get hungry and he'll demand more food to cook. So, uh, Chibi's gonna carry him, because he's just a nice guy like that. Although, he, that, he seems a bit heavy, yes? Yeah? Oh! Chibi, you are... you are struggling. But welcome to our new partner. It's Manpuku. You'll see why I think he's a really awesome character, because, like, later in the game, he is really, really badass. But early on, you're just like, who the hell are you, and why should I give a care about you? Like, we're at the end game here, and suddenly the game's like, hey, have a brand new partner. And I'm just like, what? No way. And then he calls him Pork Chop. That may possibly be the worst name out of all of them. Well, Squiddy's pretty bad too, but Pork Chop, he's, he's looking at me like I have a piece of meat. He's gonna eat me! <laughs> Anyways, um... We're gonna go ahead and fight this enemy, because like I said, there's a couple new enemies here. As you might expect, there are more of these beast sort of enemies that we've been fighting lately. We fought the Spark Beast last time, we fought the Flame Beast before, and this one's the Death Beast. Which is kind of like the three-head top of the beast, where you have all the elements. And as you can see, Matt Puka, the reason he's very useful is, he automatically gets a source of fire. So he's looking at how Nanami is a source of water. He is automatically a source of fire, which just goes to show how useless lightning is, because it's the only element that didn't get a source for free. But, um, Mapuku get, can use fire whenever he wants, which is really useful against ice enemies of all sorts, because you can just inst you just kill them without having to use Inferno. Which is nice, because we're going to be fighting a lot of ice enemies in the future, so obviously his fire ability is going to be very useful. Um, so, just like the three at the top, the Death Beast will be a certain element. You're going to have to um, counter it with said element, so fire would be weak against the, uh, good against the ice one. And of course he uses to get the Demon Lovers at the end of the fight as well. So now, um, he was in lightning form last. So we're going to draw some wind to get the Demon Livers on him. And he drops three Demon Livers, the most amount of Demon Livers you can get from an enemy, I believe, I think, possibly. A very good enemy to grind off, of, actually. So um, if you want to get Demon Livers faster than how I did, you can come up here and activate the cutscene and get them from the Death Beast. But um, I don't really care to do that, so I didn't, I didn't care to do that. Two versus three, not the biggest deal. And honestly, the Spark Beasts take a lot e are a lot easier to kill just because you can instantly go into your Gale Storm and just completely wake them off that little hurricane wind thing you get going. So um, that that is obviously a option to defeat those really fast. Death Beasts do take a while because they are tougher and whatnot. So and then we get a clay statue, also another new treasure. That's the one I was talking about. So uh, there you go. So, one more enemy to fight, and you can probably imagine what it is, because we, you know, we fought a Fire Beast, we fought the Spark Beast, we fought the one that all three of them combined, so gee, there's probably going to be a third one who have all three of them combined into, and as you can expect, there isn't actually an Ice Beast. So, um, it happens to be in the scroll opposite the one I chose, I probably should have done that one first, before doing the Death, the death Beast, but yes, uh, the Spark, Ice, and Death Beast, they just happen to all show up in the same area, which is a bit odd. I mean, they certainly spaced out the tops pretty, pretty well, um... And the, the three head top was the one in the past for some reason. But there we go, there's your Ice Beast. Probably the coolest looking one of them, in my opinion. Um, it does look pretty badass. And then my phone goes off a second time, twice in one recording. Pretty awesome. Um, so, basically, obviously, Mampuku's very good against the Ice Beast. Um, we'll be seeing a lot of them soon, so it's very handy to have. Um, his fire will dispel the ice around him. Um, his special, his, his um, partner tag, as you can see, he sort of just goes in his little oven form and just sort of zooms around the arena. Kind of similar to Kuni in a way, though it's not that useful. It doesn't really seem to ever do that much. Uh, obviously, fire is the way to get the demon livers from the ice beasts, so we'll uh, take advantage of Manpuku's free fire and uh, grab that from him. So Manpuku, very good against the ice beasts. You can just continue the attack of fire to weaken its ice defenses and allow you to attack it uh, pretty fast. So it's a pretty useful... Uh, it, it's pretty... Mampuku is pretty useful against the Ice Beasts. I've said about three times now, but I'm driving the point home, I suppose. But there you go. There's your new enemies. So now all we need to do is head to the Moon Cave, because we have a new partner. Screw you, Karao. You are a douchebag. You left us for dead. So now we're going to go over here into the Moon Cave, and we're going to save the world without you. And then afterwards, we're going to have cake. And we're going to have a nice, big, saving the world party. And you're not going to be invited. Because you didn't help try to save the world. You ran away like a little pansy. And you got your panties wet once more. And basically, no one likes you, Kurao. 
because you're mean. Anyways, um, Silver Moon Cave, not much has changed. It's pretty similar to how it looked 100 years in the future, which is kind of weird, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. This demon has nothing new to sell. You are a fraud and a liar. So we're going to go ahead, bloom this uh, little patch of corrupted soil, and get useless praise because there's really nothing in here. I'm just sort of doing it for completion's sake because I like the world to look pretty and ugly purple patches of death do not look very pretty, as you might imagine. There's also one over here just like the one before. It looks kind of a bit graphically glitchy there, to be honest. It looks sort of like it was levitating off the ground for a brief moment there. A bit awkward, I suppose. But, um, now that it's dealt with, it's time to go to the Moon Cave. Although you can kind of tell already, there might be a slight problem, because we don't have Susano with us anymore. So this barrier is still here. Not really sure how we're supposed to deal with it. And then the derpy Mampuku music starts, because he's just so derpy. He is probably the most derpy of the partners. And uh, he tells us his life story. His mother got taken to the moon cave because he ate too much. He ate everything in the house, including the kitchen sink. And thus she had to go out and find a new kitchen sink, because you can't have proper plumbing in your house without a kitchen sink. Um, no, she actually had to go out and get food. And because she went outside, the demons got her. So really, dude... If you were just not so fat, everything would be okay. And he just sort of walks away sulking, and then runs to the barrier, because he's just kind of... Chibi's like, really? I'm stuck with this guy? This is kind of lame. But yeah, so there's a barrier here. Barrier, obviously, going to be a problem. We don't really have a good way to break it, because um, it's not broken in the, past, in the future, past, whatever you want to call it at this point. So we need to find a different option. Luckily for us, we'll be finding a new option soon enough because someone is coming. Apparently, um, there's a—it's it, a boat. It's—it's it's a boat. Okay then, random boat is random. It kind of looks like a fish. It's actually a pretty cool looking boat. Uh, so, so, wow, that was some quick movement there. We're gonna sort of hide and observe what's happening. See if we can find some uh, answers to our questions here. And this demon has breasts. K, don't find demons very attractive, game. I don't know what you're trying to pull here, but um, kind of creepy. But Charity is Mampuku's mom, and apparently this demon has a bone to pick with uh, Charity, and plans to do bad things to her. This also sounds sort of evil, because she was stolen to be a, she's apparently an amazing cook. She was stolen to prepare the food for Orochi. This person used to prepare the food for Orochi, so she is a, a bit pissed off. So she's going to go ahead and one-up Charity the only way demons know how by killing her. Uh, so obviously, we have a mission. We need to save Mampuku's mother before bad things happen. So we're going to need to stop these people. Or, But um, obviously, she's inside the moon cave. We can't get in the moon cave. So what is the other rest of the whole cooking part we mentioned? Um, she's going to cook her to a stew. And apparently, humans looking... Apparently, um, the amount of skill someone has is tasty. So, apparently, if you have more skills, you are yummy, and you should thus sacrifice yourselves for me during the Azamli Apocalypse so I don't get eaten because I have no talents. The end. Um, clearly it's not true, but we'll pretend that during the Zombie Apocalypse because they'll want to go for you because you're more tasty. Because that's just the way the world works, apparently, according to this game. <laughs> They're going to cook my mom! When do you ever hear that? That's an awkward phrase. Um, so we're going to go ahead and chase after them, and hopefully they'll help us find a way inside the moon cave for that is the plan of the day so we go ahead still in the boat where is the boat gonna take us will we be able to rescue Mampuku's mom will Mampuku ever get skinny we're gonna have to find this out next time this is lucky 7dx <laughs> yay we're moving uh see you guys next time for more okami den bye bye guys